Hello everyone and welcome to another Nintendo Lounge discussion. This time we're talking about the January Nintendo Direct. Joining me is Jim. Hi Jim. Hello. We're a little bit late, uh, but here we are. <laughs> we finally did it. We're not going to get the views, but we don't do it for the views. We don't do it for the YouTube revenue. We do it for the funds. For the fun. I'm us. Scott, uh, and this Nintendo Direct has got to be probably one of the most hyped about directs before it happened ever. Oh my god. It was ridiculous. Like, people talking on Reddit, people talking on Twitter, and just like analyzing every little thing. Like, they put up a picture of the parrot from Odyssey, and they were like, oh my god, it means this because there's this many characters in the tweet, and this thing in the background means this and this and that. And they put up a chibi robo on fire, and they were like, oh my god, it means something. And then there was a hot dog suit me, and they were like, that means something too. And everyone was like, oh my god. And then it was a Nintendo Direct Mini. And they had some cool games. And they had some cool games. Yeah. And I feel because <laughs> yeah, they called it cool Nintendo games. Direct. They called it Nintendo Direct Mini. Uh, it yeah. sort of saved them from the overhypingness, destroying the Nintendo Direct for being lackluster. Yeah, absolutely. But it, like, it's still, even despite it being quote-unquote lackluster, according to many, I think it had some very, very competent and very, very cool-looking games. So I'm like, I'm happy. Like, exactly. I didn't hype it up for no reason whatsoever. It was just cool. Like, it had cool games. There you go. <laughs> anyway. So we're going to go through the games, and we're going to give our little impressions, uh, thoughts on them. Mm. Starting off with a remake of The World Ends With You. Now, mm. this is a Square Enix DS game that came out some time ago. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I've never actually heard of it before of the Nintendo Direct, but a lot of people I know, including my friend Luke, uh, hi Luke if you're listening to this, uh, absolutely oh, yeah, adore Luke. this game, love this game. Uh, so it's one of the best Nintendo DS games ever. So mm -hmm, okay. I'm looking forward to giving it a shot on uh, Nintendo Switch. How about yourself, Jimmy? Um, well, as you saw in my, my little reaction that I did for it, I had no idea what it was. I'd never heard of it in my life. Um, but art style's cool, but I don't know if I'd like it. So I'm going to kind of wait till it comes out and kind of hear about that a little bit more and see what the gameplay's like. I mean, I could look it up for myself and look up what the DS one's like, but I might wait a bit, hold it back a little bit, but it looks cool. Art style. I like it. Exactly. I'm, I'm looking forward to giving it a shot because it's a cult classic. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing yeah. what it's about. If you've also, played the game, uh, get, be sure to let us know what you think of the game, if you think it's yeah, amazing. Also, also I'm going to add to this as well, is that I'm really, like, I really like that they actually are remaking DS games, because obviously DS games mm -hmm. feature the double screen, um, you know, it's got two screens. This is really cool that they're able to remake this without the the double screen actually being required. So they're putting it on one screen and they're enhancing it HD. So we could see potentially it's opening a whole floodgate for potential DS you know, remakes, which I think is really cool because mm. there's lots of really cool games on the DS and the 3DS. So we could see some stuff in the future. Who knows? Exactly. Mario Kart DS for Switch? Who knows? Stay tuned. Don't know why that would happen. Anyway, next up... <laughs> in the Nintendo Direct Mini was Pokémon Tournament DX DLC. Now this came out yep. of nowhere. I mm. thought they're just going to release the DX version of Pokémon Tournament and then call it a day. Um, but they're adding new characters and new support Pokémon to it. So they're going to be mm. out in two different waves. Wave 1 is going to contain... Um, I don't know how to pronounce this Pokémon's name properly. Aegislash? You got it. Yeah, Aegislash. Hell yeah. Um, I've never really seen that Pokémon before, to be honest. Um, yeah, it's, which um, one is that from? Gen, it's a Gen 6 Pokemon from X and Y. Oh, okay. I played X and Y, but I somehow never came across this one. Uh, it, it looks cool. Guy. It looks really it, cool. That, I like the design of it. Um, it's, a, it's a sword character. There's not enough sword characters in um, Pokemon, unlike Smash Brothers. Uh, <laughs> and then for the supports, we have Rayquaza and Mimikyu. Now, you were a bit confused when you saw Rayquaza at first, weren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah, because I was like, Rayquaza, how is this actually a Pokemon you can fight with? But I was like, oh, it's a support, makes sense. Because I haven't played Pokemon that much, so I was like, I forgot about the supports for a second. I was like, oh, that's right, they have those things in them, because I played the demo. Um, and I also want to say as well, well, actually, no, we'll go through the other ones, and then we'll kind of have our opinions on whether it's worth it or not. So, Wave 2 includes Blastoise, which is pretty cool. I'm surprised they didn't have a Papa Blastoise in the base game. Uh... <laughs> 
And then for supports, we have Mew and Celebi. Uh, yeah. Mew is one of my favorite Pokemon. I love Mew. Celebi is pretty cool as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's okay. Do you, reckon it, um, do you reckon it's worth it? I don't reckon it's worth it. It's quite a lot of money for the, the DLC. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing I wanted to say is because the DLC characters for Smash Brothers, they were like, what, five bucks? Yeah, about five bucks for a character. Yeah, and these so, ones yeah. are like 20. These ones are like 20 bucks a character. I'm like, mm, maybe not. I can't remember. Don't, don't, don't quote me on that, but I think it's like 20, 15 bucks, something like that. It's $20, uh, $15 in America, about $20 in Australia for there both the waves. So two characters, yeah. four supports, uh, a couple of cosmetic uh, different changes for your avatar. Uh, a bit mm. much, in my opinion. Yeah I, yeah, I don't know. I don't think I'd spend that much money on some characters. Maybe if they put it in as both the characters in one thing as 20 bucks, maybe I'd consider it. But mm, I don't know. I don't think Papa Blastoise and a Swords Pokemon is worth that much money. I'm just throwing my opinion out there. Next up, Kirby Star Allies, uh, coming out yeah, March boy. 16th. Uh, this game looks really, really fun. I, I can't wait for this. Uh, Jimmy, I heard you had some little comparisons oh. to Drawn to Life when you reacted to it. That's right. Yeah, yeah, no, because I saw it. I was like, I saw the painting aspect and immediately I was like, Drawn to Life! But no, it's not It's not like that at all. It's very different. Um, I, I've been playing a little bit of Kirby games every so often um, when I go visit um, some people and stuff like that. I've been playing just co-op stuff like that. Um, so I'm actually keen for it just because I want to play more co-op games with people and sit down with people and stuff like that because since I'm actually moving away it'd be a nice chance for me when I go visit friends and family and stuff like that have a co-op game to sit down and play with them and just kind of just chill and spend time with them um, so I'm keen for this one it's kind of cool I like it yeah. I love Kirby I, Kirby's just one of those ones you love and Kirby, this game looks absolutely gorgeous as well. I love the art style for it. Um, I'm looking yeah, forward pretty. to uh, playing the whole sort of like capture ability sort of thing. Mm. The little love hearts <laughs> throwing wow, on people. Wow, that sounds familiar. Capture abilities. Hmm. <laughs> Shut up. Um, um, so yeah, not long until it comes out. Um, what was you going to yeah, say? Yeah, also, uh, also I was going to say uh, it's surprising that along with this one we didn't see anything about the Yoshi game because Yoshi and Kirby were kind of announced at the same time but we didn't actually see any Yoshi here. So I was like, okay, interesting they're not showing us anything from that one, but fair enough. I think it's kind of good to kind of space out your two, you know, main side-scroller, uh, pick-up-and-play co-op mm. games, like, you know, apart from each other a little bit. So it makes sense. But it's weird that they kind of announced them at the same time. So exactly. Cause I, I thought um, Yoshi. Yeah. I thought Yoshi was going to come out before uh, Kirby. Because uh, during E3 last year, they actually had like a whole treehouse uh, segment on the Yoshi game where they didn't show anything oh, else yeah. of Kirby. So it's I weird thought they Yoshi. Actually, yeah, would they don't come even actually have a name for it either. Yeah. Mm. I don't know. Weird. So I'm looking forward to Kirby. I'm also looking forward to Yoshi. I'm a bit more excited for Yoshi, but unfortunately, they didn't show anything off in uh, this direct. Hopefully, the next one. Um, next on the Switch games that got shown off in the direct, kind of, it got a mention. Dragon Quest Builders uh, demo is now out. Oh, I, that's right. I gave a little bit of a play. It's like a Minecraft. It's like a Minecraft boy, but you're a dragon boy. I don't, I don't know. I've never seen this game. I've actually, I've, I've, se well, I've seen the physical copy of it, like in in stores, and on like uh, on web stores and stuff like that. But I've never seen any gameplay of it, so I have no idea what it's like. But I know it's like Minecraft, so it's that's like all like an I know. RPG crossed with Minecraft. It's, it's very weird. Very strange. Okay. All right. Fair um, enough. <laughs> will I pick it up? Probably not. Uh, I might wait for a price drop before I pick this up. Um, and there's also Dragon Quest Builders 2 that's already out on PS4. It'd be quite good for people that are already kind of like this game or didn't or were keen for the game but hadn't but didn't have the console or whatever it was like the PS4 or Xbox One or a good PC. Uh, at least they've got access to it now through Switch. So it's just there. Kind of cool. Uh, exactly. Not interested, but fair enough. Or you can wait a bit longer, and apparently Dragon Quest Builders 2 will be coming out later uh, uh, later this year. All right. Uh, next up on the list, Hyrule Warriors Definitive Edition. Now, Hyrule Warriors <laughs> was a game that originally came out on the Wii U. I very much enjoyed the game. I had a lot of fun with it, uh, playing with all the different Zelda characters. Um, really good fan service. Something that I really can't get into with Fire Emblem Warriors, because I've never really played a Fire Emblem game, so I can't really... Get yeah. into it because I don't know the characters that well, mm. but with Hyrule Warriors because I know all these characters, I love all these characters. It's so much fun. 
going to all these different worlds, playing as all these different characters that you've never been able to play before, and just, just killing some people. Yeah, I'm not particularly into Dynasty Warriors. I've played Dynasty Warriors in the past, and I never really saw the appeal. I saw it as kind of like... Well, for a little bit, I saw it as kind of like, oh, uh, give it a pick up and play it and kill some enemies for a bit, but it never was like... I need to play Dynasty Warriors for hours and, and hours on end and play through it and just, like, really get into it heavily. Like, it was just kind of like a pick it up, play it, I'm kind of bored, all right, never play it again. That was what Dynasty Warriors was for me in the past, and now with this, I'm just like, eh, don't think I'll be that into it, so I'm not really keen on picking it up, really. Um, I've seen gameplay of it, and I'm like... Looks a bit too hectic for me and just too much, you know, things going on. It's just you swapping at, like, a bunch of tiny little enemies. So I'm just like, uh, I don't know. It probably goes deeper than that, but I'm not too sure. Anyway. I'll probably pick it up. I love Tyro Warriors. This one adds in all the DLC characters, all the extra stuff that was uh, put into a 3DS version. Um, including something about a fairy mode. We get to, like, look after a fairy. I don't know what that's about. Uh, sounds uh-huh. interesting. Um, I'll I'll pick it up, Uh, but one game that we're both looking forward to is Mario Tennis Aces. Yeah, boy! (laughs) So Mario Tennis Ultra Smash uh, came out on the Wii U about two years ago, three years ago, and was absolute rubbish. Um, All it included was one stage, Mm. which just had different, like, different courts on it. So you had a hard court, you had a grass court, but it was just the same stadium. Yeah. Super boring. There was only two modes in it. Um, just not not good at all. However, when this one got announced, I'm like, please, please be better than Ultra Smash. Please, please be better. Please, yep. please. And it was. It's got a single player mode. It looks pretty as well. It looks really pretty. Indeed. But that was one thing with Ultra Smash that I gave it for. It was a really gorgeous game, and I feel like they're using the same engine from that and actually build a real game. Whereas I feel Ultra Smash was sort of a tech demo. Honestly, no. I, I looked at the gameplay for Ultra Smash, and I have to say, like, it looks like very bland and lifeless and just kind of like everyone looks like a they're like a plastic toy and the whole background looks like it's made of plastic and it's kind of dull and boring but this one it looks like the dynamic shadows and it actually looks like it's like a physical kind of world and stuff like that so i think it actually looks more appealing than what the other one was so and also like that they wear tennis outfits as opposed to their regular get up so um that, that's kind of cool to me as well Exactly. Um, I love um, yeah, Waluigi like, and Wario's hair. It looks beautiful. Yeah, like uh, it looks like Wario's balding as well, which I kind of like. He looks like it looks like Donald Trump uh, with the whole comb back there. Uh, and yeah, no, I, like I never really get into sports games, but this one looks like it'd be for me. I like I don't know why. Like I'm just like this looks like fun. I want to play this, uh, and I'm keen for it as well for possibly. Uh, a an online mode to play competitively against people like immediately when they said like oh a new competitive game has come out I'm like immediately I was like oh my god is this gonna be like the new eSport the new eSport Mario Tennis Aces I can't wait for it like they're gonna play it on big stages everyone's gonna be all around it like I'm actually predicting it now okay I'm putting it down here Mario Tennis Aces is going to be surprisingly a popular eSport it has to be right come on like it's never happened, this kind of weird tennis minigame kind of game being an eSport. Just, just wait, man. It's going to happen. Like, I know it. It's, it's just going to be a thing. Put it down if there. If you say so. Um, so, it's Mario Tennis happen. Aces, it looks gorgeous. It has a single-player story mode. I'm looking forward to that. That looks really cool. Um, I'm just looking forward to another good Mario sports game, finally. Um, it's been since the Wii era since we've had a good Mario sports game. Mario and uh, Sonic. Up next, speaking of Mario and Sonic, just quickly, side note, um, it doesn't look like there's going to be a Mario and Sonic at the uh, Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games, which is a bit of a shame, um, because they're actually not that bad, in my opinion. Um, Yeah. You played one the other day, did you you have fun, Jimmy? Oh yeah, we had fun, Um, I played it with um, a couple people the other day, and um, I have to say, um, I I was terrible at it. Um, I, I played a lot of the older ones, like one of the, I like, think you know, the first one quite a while ago. I had a lot of fun with that one. I feel like that one had a lot more, uh, interesting things to it. But the one I played the other day was just the 2012 London one. Um, didn't really super get into it, but confirmed Waluigi does dab in it. I, I saw it firsthand. He definitely dabs. 
And also, uh, I enjoy the Knuckles in the game because Knuckles is a big meme right now, so that's kind of cool. That's true. I don't know. There's but, my opinion on it. Yeah, the Winter Games are in real life are happening next month, so you would have assumed they would have announced uh, a new one by now, but it doesn't seem to be the case. So we might have to wait mm. another few years until the uh, Tokyo the, Olympic Games. The 2020. Yeah, 2020 Olympics. Yeah, maybe. Exactly. We'll see. Uh, so next up, going back to the Nintendo Direct, uh, Yeast 8. Um, yes. le- 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 I don't. I can't pronounce the rest of the game. It looks interesting. Um, for a lot of people, from what I heard, it sounds like this is the game that they wanted Xenoblade Chronicles 2 to be. I don't know anything about the series. And it looks intriguing. Did you have any thoughts of the trailer, or you just sort of like, eh, another JRPG game? Yes. <laughs> okay, I'm not funny. Um, no, I'm not that kind of uh, person that plays those sorts of games, so it didn't really appeal to me at all, and it kind of looked like... Uh, I think I cut it out of my reaction, but I made the comment. I was like, oh, it's like Xenoblade mixed with uh, Monster Hunter, mixed with every anime ever. And the whole thing where it was like... She appears in my dreams. Oh my god, she's my blade. I was like, it's just this, like, it's like a like a thing where you, like the the male character in these things has this female character that's in their dreams and helps them. It, it is like their like their thing that they use in battles to help them and support them. I'm like, okay, that's kind of a weird thing to always happen, but fair enough. It kind of seems like a weird, I don't know. Like, it's a very weird thing that's in all of these games, but you know what? I'm not going to comment. <laughs> anime. That's all I have to say. Um, so next up was a free update that's coming to Super Mario Odyssey. And that yeah. is uh, Luigi Balloon World. So they originally showed this off, and I was like, oh, you get to play as Luigi? Oh my god, I love Luigi. Because yeah. as we all know, uh, in Mario Galaxy, Mario Galaxy 2, etc., you can, once you get all the stars in uh, Super Mario Galaxy at least, you get to play the game again with Luigi. And Luigi has different physics, he moves differently, uh, and it's pretty fun. But it wasn't the case. It's a little online mini game where you go hide a balloon, or you can go find people's balloons. I think it looks pretty cool. It's it's free. It's cool. I, I, it's free. It's yeah, hard. like why complain about it? Like it's it's free. It's just it's cool. <laughs> like it's just cool that they gave it to us. Like a free update. Exactly. Oh, I saw people complaining about it. Like, why don't we get to play as Luigi? This is stupid and boring, and I don't like it. Yada I'm like, it's free. Like, have fun with it, man. It's free. You're not paying for it. Like, get over yourself. <laughs> like, sorry, but it's just like people just complaining about the stupidest things, and I think this is one of those things. Exactly, I agree. And it's not like Sonic Forces where you have to pay $2 to play a Super Sonic. Yeah, y- You're not exactly. paying $2 for Balloon World. It's free. Yeah, you just get to play it. It's fun. Have fun with it, man. If it's not your Nintendo, thing, don't fun. play it. Yeah, just don't play it, man. Next up on the list is SNK Heroines Tag Team Frenzy. Uh, this is a 2D fighting game uh, similar to mm. the likes of Street Fighter, Virtual Fighter, Tekken. <laughs> The list continues. Similar um, to the likes of a lot of things, man. There's a lot of 2D fighting games. Exactly. But this one have girls in them. Just girls. Um, yeah. And it's going to have a simplified um, sort of fighting style to it. So, uh, yay, I guess. It sort of <laughs> opens these sort of games up to more people, but I don't think many people are too keen on these sort of games anyway. I don't know. And when I say many uh, people, I, I mean like the casual sort of audience. I just, I just think that in a world where Mortal Kombat uh, X exists and a game where Injustice exists, and I think in a world where uh, even the potential of having a Smash Brothers exists and Smash Brothers is on the Wii U, that this kind of fighting game seems kind of, uh, I'm going to quote a famous YouTuber here and say it seems irrelevant. I'm like, why does it exist? It just looks like kind of bland. I don't know. Like, fair enough. <laughs> After that, we had Mario and Rabbids DLC. Now, when they announced they were going to do DLC for this game, I was not particularly interested at all. I was sort of like, eh, whatever, I'll just play the main game. Call it a day. Uh, and then they showed off, and it's Donkey Kong. You're in the world of Donkey Kong. Um, and there's some uh, domestic violence between uh, Donkey Kong and Rabbid Peach, which I'm very interested yeah. to see how that it's develops in the plot. <laughs> um... But it's just kind of won me over on trying to get this DLC. I still need to finish the game first. Um, yeah, 
I'm going to wait until I've actually finished the game first and then I'll kind of decide whether I'm like, I want to keep playing and I want to experience more content from this game and then I'll probably get it. But at this point, not finish the game. I'm going to finish the game first and see whether it warrants more extra playtime. But I feel like for me, I'm probably going to be just done once it's done. I'll be like, yep, cool, had fun with it, I'm done. So since I'm not eager to play it right now, I feel like once I finish it, I'll probably just be done with it. So Exactly, but it's nice know, for people they, who um, love the game and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's the thing. Is like this is for people that love the game. It's not for like if you don't enjoy the game, which I see a lot of people saying they didn't really enjoy the game. They weren't fond of it, so they were disappointed with the DLC. And I'm like, it's not for you, man. It's for the people that love this game and played this game and finished it. Hello, hi. This is opinions and stuff like that. <laughs> so next up uh, was a reminder that Payday 2 is coming out next month, and they showed off a bit yeah. of the um, timed exclusive DLC in the game. Uh, which includes the character of Joy, or sort oh, of the, right. the face mask of Joy. Um, yeah. I don't know if it's a character or a face mask, I don't know what it is. But the, the mask for it has the colours of the Joy-Cons being uh, red and blue, which I thought was a nice little touch. Well, at least the people that were the Neon Master Race and got the Neon Joy-Cons. Am I right, exactly. boys? High five! Hey! Okay. Yeah. So, Payday 2 is a game I played on PC. I very much enjoyed it, um, but I haven't played it in quite a long time. I sort of lost interest. But hmm. I'm looking forward to trying to uh, play it again on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, play cooperatively with people nearby. Um, yeah. That'd be are cool. you gonna pick it up, Jim? Well, if you're playing co-op, I might, I might as well pick it up. Honestly, I'm I'm keen to play co-op with you and in interesting different games I've not really played before, like a co-op heist game. I've only played something like that in the likes of GTA 5, which I don't think kind of did had the potential of you know having an interesting heist aspect to it but i think since this actually focus on heist i feel like it's probably actually going to be pretty competent and pretty interesting as opposed to gta 5 was which is kind of a bit lackluster anyway cool i'm excited <laughs> so the next game they showed off in the nintendo direct mini was the culprit for all of these leaks it was the one that spread fee. the email it was ea's fee, fee. uh fee. this game looks absolutely beautiful um I'm looking forward to possibly giving this a go. I don't know if I will put money into it, but it looks gorgeous. I'll say that at least. Uh, are you going to play it at all, Jimmy, or are you just going to just see how it comes out and how people I, respond to it? I think I'm going to play it because I love these sorts of games. I love indie games. I love supporting in. Well, it is, it is developed by EA, but it's, it's EA supporting indie developers it, and bringing yeah, in EA published. In. Yeah. EA published, but still developed by a small company that started off as an indie company so i will support it for that and also i do enjoy these sorts of games it's a 3d uh open kind of platformerish thing which i really love um i love a lot of the ones that have recently come out i'm really interested to play um like hat in time and i've obviously enjoyed uh, mario odyssey and uh ukulele was uh, pretty decent as well so i'm keen to see these ones and having ea kind of back it up and have the um obviously the monetary support Obviously, this one probably is going to have a lot of quality to it because obviously you have games like Ukulele, which obviously was backed up on Kickstarter and stuff like that. Obviously, it's not going to get quite the support that maybe EA would be able to give a small company. So, yeah, no, I'm keen for this one. After that, they had Celeste, a game which I don't really care for, to be honest. Um, I'm getting a bit tired of all these sort of like indie pixel art sort of games. I'm starting yeah. to feel like they're a bit over saturation of that now. Yeah, that's. I think I cut out my reaction to that one as well, uh, because I probably will contradict myself another day when I see a really cool pixel art uh, indie game that comes out in the future. Hyperlight Drifter being like one of my favorite games that had, like I played in the, re the past recent years. Uh, and that's obviously got that art style as well. But these kind of side-scroller pixel art indie games are such a huge thing that exists. Uh, and it's just every time you see one, and especially this one, I had that reaction too. I saw this and I was like, another one of these? Okay. All right. Like, I used to love these sorts of games. But now with just so many of them, Shovel Knight being the kind of definitive one that exists right now, I think it's just like... Why get this? Is there a reason? Yeah, no, I, w I would have I would have loved to if they kind of... Because there was a part of it where there was, like, different... Like, there was, like, boxed-out areas of the of the side-scroller map where it had, like, 
weird celestial looking areas, which obviously Celeste, whatever the game is called, there must be some aspect of the game, some gameplay component that is interesting about it, but unfortunately they didn't show it. So that's why I'm like, I don't really care for this because it just looks like a side-scroller indie game, but if they showed us an aspect to it, a gameplay mechanic that we have not seen before, then maybe I'd be keen for it, but they didn't show that, so that makes me think there's nothing about it that is interesting gameplay-wise, so I'm not keen to pick it up. But if there's another trailer that comes out in the future, or maybe I do a bit more research into the game, maybe that'll actually show, oh, there's this really cool celestial gameplay element where you can go into these squares and suddenly the gameplay aspects change and you have to do something different, um, then maybe I'll grow interest, but at the moment it looks like a bland 2D pixel art side scroller and that's all it looks like so eh eh don't know mm. now since the switch has come out we've had a lot of wii u ports uh being pokemon tournament we've got mm. hyrule warriors and now we've got donkey kong tropical freeze coming to the hey. nintendo switch very soon yeah. now i originally played donkey kong tropical freeze on the wii u that game kicked my butt um it is extremely difficult i managed to finish yeah, it though and I was so proud of myself once I did that. Um, however, with the Switch release, they're adding a new character. Which at first, I was like, oh my god, I love... Um, um, Funky Kong. <laughs> I love Funky Kong. <laughs> I love him yep. so much, I forgot his name for a second. Um, but then I sort of saw what his character was. And it's kind of like an easy mode for the game. Where you have uh, unlimited like roles. Uh, which sort of, when you do roles, they sort of destroy the enemies so with gotcha. Donkey Kong if you do a roll and he does a little roll and then you come back up whereas with Funky Kong you can just get, keep going keep killing all the enemies uh, you can step on spikes you can can do infinite glides and also like eh, okay you're just probably just gonna breeze through this game easy if you play as Funky Kong so I recommend don't play as Funky Kong unless you're really stuck on a level then you have permission to go play as him other than that <laughs> be a good gamer and play as play as Donkey Kong um, but since I already played through the game on the Wii U and there's not many incentives to purchase it again, I'll probably skip on this one. This is probably one of my first Nintendo releases I'm going to skip for the Switch. Uh, but how about yourself, Jimmy, since you never um, played Tropical Freeze? I'm going to get it, uh, probably day one as well, because I watched a video last year and we might be able to either link it or maybe uh, yeah, just reference it in the video. But a video by a YouTuber called Mark Brown, uh, who does a series called Game Maker's Toolkit, which is like a game developer um, series where he talks about game design and games. He did a whole video on Donkey Kong Country Tropical Freeze. Uh, the video is called Mario Level Design Evolved. And watching this and how he talked about the game design aspects and everything about it, it really intrigued me to play this one. And I was so upset that obviously I didn't have a Wii U, I couldn't play it. Um, and then to see this announced just made me really happy. Oh, unfortunately, my uh, my camera literally stopped recording and ran out. Of, like, like I, it stopped recording the moment it was revealed because my face kind of lit up at that point, which is unfortunate that that bit cut out. Um, but my face lit up when I saw it. <laughs> the only bit of excitement. Yeah, no, the only bit of excitement. I actually had a smile on my face and my face lit up when I saw it. Unfortunately, I uh, only got to hear my reactions a little bit and I was like silent pretty much because I was smiling. Um, so I couldn't really show that in the video, but I was smiling. I was really happy to see it because I was like, great, I see, I seen a video on this that made me really excited to see it from a game, game design as my uh, game design viewpoint. So that's why I'm keen to play it because of this video, because of Mark Brown and the way he talked about it. So, um, take this as maybe a bit of a shout out towards this YouTuber because he's great. He's amazing. Um, and yeah, no, I'm excited for the game based on that and based on his viewpoints and his opinions on it. So that's what I have to say about that. I'm keen to play it. Nintendo ended off the Nintendo Mini with a surprise announcement. Ooh. Ooh uh, boy. Unfortunately for me, uh, I knew it was coming because it got leaked. Okay. Um, and that was Dark Souls Remastered. Ooh. Mm. Now, well. Dark Souls is a game that my friend Josh, shout out to Josh, absolutely loves. He absolutely adores the Dark Souls series. Uh, he's beaten them, surprisingly. I don't know how he does that. Um, <laughs> he says they're amazing. He says he can't wait to play it again on the Nintendo Switch. Uh, for me, I don't know. I've never got into Dark Souls. Um, I'll, I'll probably give it a go, but it doesn't excite me like it does for everyone else. 
everyone goes, oh my god, this is the Dark Souls of, of platformers, mm. or this, or that, or that. I know it's hard, but I'm like, eh, yeah, I don't know if it, I, it doesn't, it doesn't do it for me. How about yourself, Jimmy? Um, kind of in the same boat there, although, again, gonna constantly be talking about this YouTuber, um, but <laughs> Mark Brown also did a video about Dark Souls. That kind of interested me in the game, not as much as what Donkey Kong did for me as well, but, um... No, I'm, I'm interested to maybe possibly give it a go, much like you said as well. Uh, but I've played about 20 minutes of it. I popped over to my friend's place and they were kind of in the middle of the game. And they said, hey, give it a go. Um, obviously, they were in the middle of the game. Like, I didn't get to start the game. I didn't get to start off, like, from the bare minimum. I was just in the middle of the game. And he said, hey, try to do this bit. And I kind of played it for 20 minutes and I couldn't do it. It was a lot of backtracking. I died, had to do a whole thing again, run around for five minutes trying to get to where I was and when I died. It was frustrating but i think that was due to me starting in the middle of this person's save file so maybe i might like it but i'm not too sure i might have to give it a go just like you said so i might have to pick it up physically when it comes out and possibly give it a go and then possibly return it if i'm not into it um but hey uh maybe we can do some kind of video kind of first impressions one uh on dark souls because since we both exactly. haven't played a little, it a little rage get, like, compilation i feel yeah possibly yeah and just kind of like a first the impressions because I think people really like seeing that kind of thing where people get their first impressions on the game that have never had the chance to play it because maybe they're Nintendo fans or just aren't into those sorts of games so uh, yeah no I'm keen to give it a go at the very least give it a go so that was the Nintendo Direct Mini uh, as much as it was called a Mini Direct they got a lot mm. of information in that there was so minutes. much yeah Absolutely. Uh, a lot of it was somewhat small stuff DLC ports stuff like that but it was still very cool information to hear yeah so there was actually there was a lot of stuff in this one which is what is weird that people are complaining about it in a way but they did preface it was a direct they never actually promised the direct prior it was obviously a leak an accidental leak but people obviously hype themselves up way too much to kind of expect something huge uh, people are even predicting now, like immediately after this one came out, people were like, look at this. Every single time there's a mini, there's a 20 days after, there's a direct, uh, like a big direct. So maybe we'll get one. I don't know. Um, but I'm like, it could be a coincidence. So maybe we might not, but there's a possibility yeah. and I'm, I'm not going to get my hopes up and uh, dream for the biggest things ever. I feel like they might save things for Easter as well. So I'm just going to leave my expectations on the floor is that a saying i don't know but i'm gonna leave them on the floor then and i'll <laughs> and hopefully <laughs> hopefully um it's not you know um gonna disappoint too many people but i feel like it is it's inevitable it's gonna disappoint everyone so that was our impressions on the nintendo direct mini of january 2018 uh, <laughs> sure let us know in the comments what you thought of the direct were you impressed were you disappointed were you sad there was no smash brothers be sure to let us Again. know be sure to hit that subscribe and the bells and the likes, all the YouTube stuff. Uh, give us over 4,000 hours so we can get monetized. Uh, yeah, man. All that jazz. <laughs> we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Catch you later, boys.